Ba -ba -da -da. John Rowe, Control Superhero, here on AC Controls TV, going to talk to you about what I feel is the best kept secret in the control and automation industry, and that's Honeywell's HC900. The HC900 is basically a, a hybrid, thus the name HC. It uses a programming software package that's very similar to a DCS with function blocks, makes it easy to configure PID loops, uh, pump start stop stations, things of that nature. But it's tied into more of a PLC type platform with its small modular construction. And so basically it's a marriage between those two, giving you the ability to right out of the box, get a system up and running, uh, low cost, scalable, and uh, we're going to talk to you a little bit about the programming of that product today. A lot of people are intimidated by function blocks because they haven't used them a lot. And I'm going to walk you step by step through setting up a PID loop and then uploading that into the Control Station 900, which again has a rich product suite that allows us to take that configuration, back build it into the HMI so that there's very little configuration that I've got to do right out of the box. So hopefully uh, you'll get to see a little bit of that and how it's done and, and uh, we'll go from there. First of all, I want to start by opening my Hybrid Control Designer software package. I'm going to select New Configuration. Come down to Controller Type. I'm going to select the C50 controller, which is what I've got in this unit. And I'm going to select the latest revision, 4.4 firmware. Now I've got an open environment that I can do my programming in. And so I'm going to come over here select analog input from the library and I'm going to drag it to the screen. If I double click that block basically the parameters that I can configure for that block come up. I've got this thing set up for 4 to 20 milliamp input so I'm going to select linear go to 4 to 20 select that and then I'm going to tell it which rack which is rack 1 I'm going to tell it which module which is module 1 the first slot available and then the channel which is the first channel now, a note of caution here is a lot of PLCs start with zero as the first slot and zero as the first channel. In the Honeywell world, everything starts with one and goes forward. So we're going to select that. Then my range, zero to 100%. Another big thing of separating us from the PLC guys is I don't have to keep up with all these A to D conversions. I use the engineering units that we use in the field. So zero to 100% is zero to 100%. If I was dealing with flow, zero to 3,000 gallons. I just put it in here and I don't have to do any of the math for the A to D conversion. All right, I'm going to give this thing, since we're going to do a live demo with it, about 15 seconds of filter time. I've got the output tied to the input and we'll show you how that works. Okay, so the input block is done. I can now scroll down here to loop blocks and one of my selections is a PID block. So I'm going to take that and I'm also going to drag it to the screen. And to complete the loop, I'll need an output block. So I'm going to grab an analog out. I'm going to grab and drag it to the screen as well. Now to tie all of these together, there's a thing called soft wiring where I take an output pin, which you see here, and I'm going to drag it to the input pin on the PID block. I'm going to do the same with the output pin of the PID. I'm going to tie that to the input pin of the analog output block. If I double click the output block, I can configure its parameters as well. Rack one, Module 2, because the analog output resides in the second slot, and I'm going to select channel 1. So that input is now pre-wired. The output is tied to the input. And I'm going to OK that. Once I'm done with that, if I double click the PID block, I need to give it a tag name, and I'm going to call it Tank Pressure. We want to tag everything we can. The algorithm set up for a PIDA, which is what I want, and reverse acting. My start restart tab allows me to go in and select how that block comes up from both an initial mode when I initialize it or from a power up mode if it loses power. So I want it in both situations to come up in automatic. Nothing else there. I need to configure my remote set point tab basically allows me to select how the remote set point is handled, whether I use a percent input or engineering units, and we're not going to deal with that today. We'll hold that for another session. 
the range and limits. So I want to range my PID block the same as my input, so I'm going to set it up 0 to 100% as well. I'm going to give it one decimal place, and I'm going to tell it my units are percent. Here is also where I can set up limits on how far an operator can move the set point up or down. We're going to leave it like it is for now at the default configuration. We can also change how fast the set point moves when an operator changes it. So that can be slowed down so it doesn't bump a process. My tuning tab, I'm going to pull it up and just for grins and giggles, I'm going to give it a 2 and a 0.5 to kind of give it some tuning parameters to get things started. But you notice we also have an AccuTune tab. This product has automatic loop tuning, which a lot of PLCs don't, and they charge you big money for a loop tuning package. With the HC900, it's all about the customer, so we've embedded that in, and I'm going to enable tuning here. And I'm going to OK that so that when we get up and going, we can auto-tune this loop and I can show you how that works. Also, we've got another tab that's alarms and uh, I'm going to set up a PV high alarm and set it for 80. 80%. And show you how to put a signal tag on this. I'll tell you how that works a little later as well. We're going to call this tank underscore AL1 for tank alarm 1. And so that alarm is now tied to a tag that I can use elsewhere in the program as I deem fit. So now we've got one loop complete and it's ready to download, but do you really expect a control superhero to only do one loop? I don't think so. So what I'm going to show you how to do now is very easily, I'm going to draw a box around those items I'm going to right mouse click and I'm going to copy them. I'm going to come back on my programming screen and I'm going to do a right mouse click and paste. And so now I've basically duplicated that loop. Very easily I can go in and change the rack to rack 1, module 1, channel 2, double click the output block, rack 1, module 2, channel 2. Okay. So now I've duplicated that loop and I've got two control loops ready to go. I'm going to hit the download button. Oh, I've got to save it first. So I'm going to do a file, save as, 60 hertz, and I'm going to select desktop, and I'm going to select AC TV HC900 as a spot that we're going to save this configuration. And then it asked me if there are unconnected blocks. Do I want to see a list? And no, we don't want to see that. So that unit has been saved. It's ready to download. I click the download button. I tell it to start. And in just a few seconds, bam, it's gone. And now it asks me whether I want to do a cold start or a hot start. The difference between those is a cold start reinitializes the controller. It'll take all the outputs down and reflash the memory so that everything comes up from basically zero. But if I select hot start, what it does is freezes the outputs and the inputs for a period of time until it can get that program loaded into the next scan. It'll freeze everything for about two seconds. But if I select that, now basically my control system could stay up and running while that's done. And so in a lot of cases that's a nice feature where you want to download that controller but you don't want it to interrupt your process. So that's basically the configuration for the HC. And uh, just a word, guys, this thing is not intimidating. It's easy to do. So with Honeywell's HC900, not only am I a control superhero, but you can be too. So try one in your planner facility today. Thanks for watching.